Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator. And this video, we're going to show you, it's an extract from our Intro to Auto Hotkey course, Intro and V2, that is. And Isaias is going to walk you through how to create hotkeys, which are obviously one of the big things in Auto Hotkey. It's one of the first things people learn, hot strings and hot keys, right? Phenomenally helpful. You can use them to launch things. You can do use them for a lot of different stuff. They're, think of them as triggers when you want to do something is the most often used. So in this video here, Isaias is going to walk you through how to set them up. Um, I'm going to put up a, a coupon code or a link that will give you 20% off if you're interested in getting the Intro to Auto Hotkey course. It's a great, solid course. I think it's around four hours long. Most of the videos are between three to five minutes. This one's a little bit longer, but uh, they're very, very to the point and easy to follow. They're built for people who don't know anything about coding. So check it out. I hope you liked it. Please like the video. If this helps you because it really helps us out. Cheers. Creating hotkeys is as easy as we saw for creating hot strings. So again, in our hotkey, it is just a matter of specifying the hotkey that you want and the action. The only thing that changes a little bit is the syntax of how you do that. Let me go ahead and show you how to create static and dynamic hotkeys. So if we open a new file, we have our directives here for single instance and what it requires. And in this case, let's go ahead and create a hotkey. But before we do, let's go ahead and talk about the modifier keys because in our hotkey it just so happens that modifier keys like control alt shift and the windows key have special characters that you can use to refer to them now for the control character the control key you have the caret like this for the alt key you have the exclamation point like that for the shift key, you have the plus sign like that. And for the windows key, you have the hashtag like this. So if I want to create a hot key that says control enter or control shift enter, I don't have to write control or, you know, shift. I don't have to write any of that. I just use the character that is designed for it. And that's the reason why on the hot strings, whenever you're typing words, if it contains any of these characters, they would be translated to the modifier keys because each, because each of them has a specific meaning. But now, to create a hot key, let's go ahead and say that I want to show a message box when I hit Control Enter. So what I would do is I would have to use the character for Control, which is the caret, and then Enter as a word like that and then I put two columns one after the other which defines that I'm doing a hotkey so as you can tell it's very similar to what I did with hot strings the only difference is that I do not have the columns at the beginning the columns is what tells our hotkey that it's a hot string instead of a hotkey here I don't have the two columns at the beginning but I do have the two columns to divide the action In this case let's go ahead and do message box right and this is a test. So now when I run this script, whenever I hit control enter on my keyboard, I will get this new box. This is great. As I mentioned, it's really easy. And even though this example is very simple, you could do many other things uh, and actually very cool things. For example, just to show you how easy it is, instead of a message box let's do something a little bit more practical let's say that I want to have a website show up whenever I press a hotkey so let's go ahead and do control okay shift F1 I could do this control shift F1 now what I could use in this case is the run command which allows me to execute any file folder or anything that opens automatically with a default application. So for example, websites, if I try to run an HTTP file or www dot whatever page, this command will know that those type of files are opened with my default browser, in this case, Chrome, and it would just go ahead and open Chrome with it. So this is amazingly cool because I could just go ahead and add a website. Let's go ahead and add the Automator website here. I run this up and again, as I mentioned, this is control shift plus F1 in this case, and this is control plus enter. 
right? So I'm running my script, Control Shift F1, just goes ahead and opens Scrum with that page. So just imagine how cool it is that you can create hotkeys for many actions, opening files and folders or opening websites in a matter of seconds. You would create a few of these very easily. Now, these two that I just mentioned, that I just showed, are static hotkeys. You can do the same as with the, with the hot strings and is the same concept with the hotkey command instead. So this command takes a hotkey as the first parameter. Notice that I'm actually putting quotation marks because it's this this literal text. So this would be control. So let's say control shift enter in this case. And then the action goes on the right side. But the second the, the action that I'm going to perform is usually a function that you're going to call. And for that reason, I do not have to put that in quotation marks because it is a function object. And not only that, I have to define, define the function myself. So let's say open desktop. This is going to be my function. I just name it like that. But as that is not literal text, this is referring to a function. You do not have to put quotation marks there, but you do have to define the function somewhere else. We will talk about functions later during the course, but as a quick overview, this function will take one parameter. It is the hotkey that I press this up. And in the braces here, I'm going to put the actions that I want to perform with this function. In this case, what I want to do is run the desktop. So a desktop is a variable that contains the path to my desktop. And if I try to run a folder, what is going to happen is that AutoHotKey is just going to go ahead and open the folder in Explorer. So in this case, this is the way to define a dynamic hotkey, which you can, of course, use option, right? If you have a variable called option, you can determine if it is true or false. And if it is true, then go ahead and use the hotkey and set the hotkey. If it is false, don't set it. So this is the way to create dynamic hotkeys. These are the static ones. Let's run this out. And if I press, for example, control shift enter, I should get the desktop here, but if I press Control Shift 1, I would get the website to the automator. This is how simple you can create hotkeys in here.